بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتم بالخير اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما uh, Let's begin inshallah our book number three with the dua from the Quran Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana lihada وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله. Praise to Allah who has guided us to this, and we would never have been guided if Allah had not guided us. So we thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who blessed us with the opportunity to complete book number one, book number two, and here we start book number three. So lesson number one. And it is about Al Irabu Wal Binau. Al Irabu Wal Binau. And we discussed about the key points. So if you look at the translation, it says declinable and non declinable. As we have discussed many times, that, that there are two types of nouns the nouns whose endings change, and there are some nouns their endings do not change. Before we proceed to uh, Al-Irab wal bina I'll just have a quick look on the properties of the noun. As we know that there are four properties of a noun and uh, it is very, very important for us to know these four. And as you know that we have discussed them in detail in book number one, in book number two. So we are not going to discuss about them one by one. Uh, but just a quick review for you to, to remember that a noun has four properties. And what are those? The first one is the capacity. So we know that a noun will be either common noun, like kitabun, a book, or a proper noun, al-kitabu, the book. So a noun has capacity, then it has gender, and we know that um, either it's al-mudhakkaru, which is masculine, for example, ibnun, a boy, or a son, and al-mu'annathu, which is ibnatun, uh, a girl or a daughter. So capacity, gender, and then we have number, al-adadu. And as we have discussed that there are three types of adad in Arabic, al-bufradu, which is single, like Muslimun, a Muslim. And then we have Al Muthanna, which is the dual, like Muslimani, and we know the Ani sound. And then we have the plural, Muslimuna, the Una sound. So, number, and then we have the status, Al Arabu. As we can see here, the title is Al Arabu Wal Bina'u. So, that means that. Uh, the main focus will be on this part, which is number four, the status or al-Arab. And we know that every noun in Arabic language has three forms. How many forms? Three. Al-Raf'u, which, uh, uh, which is the doer, if it is a verbal sentence. In the verbal sentence, we say the doer. And in a nominal sentence, in Jumlatul Ismiya, we say Mubtada. So either it's in the place of the muqtada or it is in the place of the doer, al-raf'u. Then we have al-nasbu. Al-nasbu is uh, in the place of the receiver, as we say, the object, as we can see here, musliman. So the, the sign of al-raf'u is dhamma, muslimun. al is musliman and al-jar is muslimin. So when the noun is a doer, it will be with dhamma. When it is the receiver of the action, it will be with fatha. And when it comes after the preposition, it will be with kasra or majroor. So Arab status. Now we will discuss about this in detail now from this lesson. Okay, al arabu wal binau. So basically nouns are in one of the two forms. So the nouns will be either mu'rabun, which is declinable, or um, they also call it like in English, triptote. So what is era basically? 
If we look in the details or to see here, Araba Yorebu Araban. Which verb form is this? Do you remember? Aslama. Aslama Yuslim Islam. Islam, number four, excellent. So this is verb form number four. Araba Yorebu Araban to state clearly, to express something clearly without any kind of doubt or without any kind of hesitation. That's why uh, the people are called, the people who speak Arabic are, are called Arab, Arabun, right? Those who speak Arabic, why? Because they state whatever they speak uh, in a very clear and expressive manner. That's why they are called Arab. So Arab, you are every Arabun, and Ismul file will be more Ibn, as we know. And if you remember, uh, in the derived forms of the verb, Ismul Maf'ul, and verf makan, they are the same. So either it's the receiver of the action or it's ismul maf'ul or it is used as verf makan. Do you remember the example like we discussed? Salla yusalli uh, to pray. And uh, the, the person who prays is called musallim. And the place where we pray is called musalla, right? Musalla. So the one who is prayed upon, like if someone dies and we pray upon him, is also musalla. And the, the place where we pray is also called musalla, the place of praying. So uh, this is very important point that we need to remember that in the derived forms of the verb, ismul maf'ul and dharf makan will be the same. Like munqalab and munqalabun, right? So munqalab is the place of return and it also it means returning uh, to a place or returning. Um, all right. So. The change in the status of the word due to an agent, al-amil, without any change in the meaning is called morabun. So what is morabun? As we can see here, declinable or trip trot, that the status of the word will change, but the meaning will not change. What is meant by the status? That's why it's named status. Like it could be marfur, it could be mansub, and it could be majroor. All right. Uh, for example, we say Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammadun. What is the status of Muhammad? The, the, the kalima or the word Muhammad is Mubtada. It is Marfu. Muhammadun Rasulullah. So it is Marfu. Then we say Ashadu Anna Muhammadan. Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasulu. Now we say Muhammadan. Why is it Muhammadan? Because of the Anna. Amil. Anna. Because of Anna, right? Amil, which is Anna, right? So, Ashadu Anna Muhammadan, Abduhu wa Rasulu. And then we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin. So, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin. Uh, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send blessings on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So, ala Muhammadin. So, in the first sentence, it's Muhammadun. In the second, it is Muhammadan. And the third, it is Muhammadin. So, the status has changed, uh, but Muhammad, uh, the, the kalima Muhammad, the meaning doesn't change. It remains as it is. And if we see here now, ja al mudarrisu, the teacher came. So it is marfu because it has dhamma over here. So alamat raf is dhamma as we can see here. Sa'altu al mudarrisa, I asked the teacher. Here it is mansub. And salamtu al al mudarrisi. It is Majroor. I, I said, Asalaamu Alaikum to the, or I greeted Islamic greetings to the teacher. Salam to Al Mudarrisi. Okay, now, Ja Al Mudarrisu, where is the Amil over here? Because an agent has to be there. There has to be something. Uh, because of that, the noun will never ever be Marfu or Mansub or Majroor by itself without any reason. Whenever it is Marfu or Mansub or Majroor, uh, there has to be a reason. Okay, uh, we have heard that like the prepositions like ala, as we can see here, uh, they will bring the noun to majroor and it becomes ala al-madarrisi. However, the verbs are also in the category of amil. They also do some function, why? Because when we have the first form of the verb, ja'a, after that we know the file will always be marfur. So ja'a al-madarrisu. Can we say ja'a al-madarrisa? Or ja al-madarrisi? 
No. We cannot. Why? Because the madaris is the, the doer. Okay, and the, uh, the doer has to be always, always marfur. That's why we will say ja al mudarrisu. Sa'altu al mudarrisa. Here, why it is mansub al mudarrisa? It's an object. It's an object, object because sa'ala, uh, he asked, and sa'altu, I asked. So I is the subje subject, sa'ala is the verb, and al mudarris is the object. Sa'altu al mudarrisa, I asked the teacher. And salamtu ala al-mudarrisi, I greeted the teacher. So be, here it is mudarrisi, it has kasra because of ala, right? So here the verb is the uh, amil, and here harfijar is the amil. So um, the status will change, and it will change because of an amil or agent. And when this change takes place, it is called morabun. Okay, now here morabun, is it ismul mafud or ghurf makan? It is dharf makan, why? Because it is a place where the ending changes. Okay, so it's a place of changing, right? So something that has been stated, something that has been ex expressed. So the, the place of expression where the change has taken place, that is called morab. If we say this is ismul maful, uh, that means that it has been stated. But we are not talking about something that has been stated because when we state something, it is like once and that's it. But when we say it's ghurf makan, that means this is the makan of the of the, the, the haraka, like the vowels, like fatha, dhamma, or kasra, where the ending changes. So sometimes it will be dhamma, sometimes it will be fatha, and sometimes this, it will be kasra. So that's why, that's why we will say that the noun is murab. That's why we will say noun is murab, and we will consider it as ghurf makan, the place of change, because it will. It changes all the time. Sometimes it is marfu, sometimes it is mansub, and sometimes it is majroor. Okay, so al arab as we can see here, it's clear now that uh, it means to state clearly. And why we say it is declinable? Because of being a dharf makan, and uh, we change it either to marfu or mansub or majroor. That's why it is translated as declinable. Yani it has three states in three forms three states in three forms. It is marfu, mansub, and majroor. All right, then we talk about the second form, which is mabniyun, noun, which is uh, a noun which is non-declinable or diptot. Mabniyun, okay. Now, um, I'm sure you still remember that we have discussed that uh, ismal manqus, uh, which is um, bana yabni, Bina'an. So Bina'an is also Masdar. Bana to build. Yabni, he builds. Bina'an is, is, is the Masdar, the building. And Ismul Fail will be Banin. And Ismul Maful will be Mabniyun. Mabniyun. So why it is called Mabniyun? Uh, because it is something, we know that building is something that is fixed. Once it has been placed, we cannot just simply remove it from one place to the other place. So that's why it is called mabniyun, that it is fixed. So if you look at the, the topic now, uh, as it says, al-irabu wal binau, so that means declinable and non-declinable uh, nouns. That means the nouns that are flexible and the nouns that do not change. And why they do not change? al binau means building. And with refers to the building, it means something that will not change because of the amil. So nouns are said to be non-declinable, mabniyun, when their endings do not change in spite of the presence of an or the agent. So even if we have amil over there, the ending will not change. So that's it. There are only two types of nouns, mu'rabun and mabniyun. Mu'rabun means uh, they are declinable and mabniyun means they are non-declinable. Now see here, ja'a ha'ulai. Okay, now we can see here that ha'ulai is marfu, but we will say this is fi mahalli raf'in. Also, please remember that when we say fi mahalli raf'in, it only happens with the nouns that are mabniyun. For any other noun, we cannot use the term mabniyun or we cannot use the term fi mahalli raf'in. We will only use the term when the noun is mabniyun. So ja'a ha'ulai, ha'ulai is in the place of the doer. Then we have sa'altu ha'ulai. Now here, if we look at uh, like the regular form, it should be ha'ula'a, 
and this one should be haula u, right? This one should have dhamma, and this this one should have fatha. But this is not the case. Why? Because this noun is mabniyun. And then we have salam to haulai fi mahalli jarrin. So whenever a noun has uh, mabni construction, it will be the same when it is marfu. It will be the same when it, when it is mansub, and it will be the same when it is majroor. However, we will say that this is fi mahalli raf'in, wa fi mahalli nasbin, and fi mahalli jarrin. Is this clear so far? Yes. Yeah, and I do believe this is a, a basically a review of what we learned in book number one, not even in book number two. So I do believe that inshallah there shouldn't be any problem. Now we talk about the Alamatul Arabi. And basically this is lesson number one. Uh, lesson number one does not consist of any new ideas. It basically consists of the review of book number one and book number two. Um, I have translated everything in English over here, but when we start the lesson, inshallah, in the next, hopefully, um, class, then you will see that all of this information will be Arabic, and inshallah, it will be much easier for you to understand by then. But as of now, I want you to focus on this so that when we do the lesson, um, you don't have any problems. So now we discuss about the alamat of Arab, the signs of Arab, and here we are talking about al asliyatu the primary endings. So there are two types of endings, uh, I guess like, or, or there are three uh, types of endings. So the first one that we are dealing with is alamatul arabi al asliyatu, the primary endings. Aslun is used for something that is original. And from aslun, the plural is usulun, like the roots. And then we talk about asliyatu, that means primary. And as we have discussed that uh, Mu'rabun, the declinable noun, it has three states in three forms. Three states in three forms, okay? And the Dhamma indicates the nominative case as we have discussed a, a, a refer. Fatha indicates the accusative case as we have discussed a nasb and the kasra indicates the genitive case al -jar. All right. So now if you see here, uh, we have only two types of nouns that are morab, only two types of noun. Number one, al ismul mufradu, singular noun. A singular noun, whether it is a proper noun or a common noun. For example, muslimun, musliman, muslimin. Okay, we know that every noun has three forms, raf and nasb and jar. And how many states does it have? It has three states. What are those? Mun, man, min. Okay, Sh when we talk about the Arab, shall we say that this is a marfu by tanween? How will we say when we have tanween over there? Uh, please I remember that, the yeah, tanween itself is not any vowel sign. It's basically the noon sound which has been replaced by another vowel sign. So when we when we have a noun that has tanween like uh, uh, Zaydun, Zaydan, Zaydin, or it has Muslimun, Musliman, Muslimin. So we will say that this is marfu, uh, or it is raf bil dhamma, wa mansub bil fatha, and majroor bil kasra. All right. So we will not say that it's marfu by tanween because if we say it's marfu by tanween, then Muslimun it is also tanween, Musliman is also tanween, and Muslimin is also tanween. It has only one name, but we have three different states. So that's why we say this is marfu. Uh, by the by the fat, uh, for the, by the dhamma and this is mansub by the fatha and this is majroob uh, majroor by the kasra. Okay, then we have um, either it's a common noun or a proper noun. We will have dhamma, fatha, and kasra, and jam or taksir the broken plural. Kitabun. What is the plural of kitabun? Kutubun, right? So a jam or taksir. Uh, also, the ending of Jammu Taksir has three forms in three states. So it has three forms and three states Al Kutubu, Al Kutuba, and Al Kutub So it has Dhamma, Fatha, and Kasra. Did you get the idea when I say three states and three forms? Three forms we know Rafa, a Raf, a Nasb, and Al Jar. And what is meant by states? Like it has Dhamma. Fatha and Kasra, as we can see here, Al-Muslimu, Al-Muslima, Al-Muslimi, 
and al kutubu al kutuba al kutubi so only a uh, singular noun and the broken plural they have the real or the primary endings only two nouns what are those the singular noun al usma al ismu al mufradu wa jam'u taksir only the broken plural and the singular noun they have primary endings the rest of the nouns all of the nouns in arabic language they have secondary endings what kind of endings do they have secondary so primary only for the singular noun and the broken plural let's have a look over here alamat al arabi al fariyatu al fariyatu far'un as we know it is called for the branch and uh, when we talk about fariyatu that means the secondary something that is not the main not the head not the main campus it is called as the branch so that's why it is called alamat al arabi al fariyatu the secondary endings okay what is the difference between uh, the primary endings and the secondary endings in the primary endings we have three forms and we have three states but here we have two forms two states and three forms the forms will never change they are always three but they have two form two states as we can see here two states how the sound feminine plural jam'ul mu'annithi as-salimu al-muslimatu al-muslimati al-muslimati how many states are there two states what are those dhamma kasra and kasra so the sound a feminine plural when it is mansub or majrur or what when it is in the position of nasb and jar it will take kasra it will take us and here we are not discussing about the examples because there are examples in the lesson here i'm just giving you a brief idea of what we are going to have in the lesson so i would like you to focus only on the endings so far and inshallah uh, when we start our lesson then we will have lots of examples over there okay the diptot or partially flexible al mamnu min as sarf okay al mamnu min as sarf we know that also it has uh, uh, two states Uh, it has dhamma, fatha, and fatha. That means it does not take kasra. Here we have dhamma, kasra, kasra, and here we have uh, dhamma, fatha, and fatha. Zainabu, Zainaba, Zainaba. Al mamnu min al sharf. Why is it mamnu min al sharf? Because it's a feminine name. Yeah, all the feminine, feminine names. names. Yeah, all the feminine names. Feminine are, name. Um, mamnu min So, for example, you say Jaat Zainabu, Raaitu Zainaba, Jaat Zainabu Zainab came, Raaitu Zainaba, I saw Zainab, and Jalastu Ma Zainaba, I sat with Zainab. So, as you can see here, Nasb and Jar, it has Fatha, it does not accept Kasra. so that's that's why we say that it has two states in three forms similarly jaat al muslimatu and then you say raitu al muslimati and marartu bil muslimati so again it will be khalaq allah al samawati wal arda as you can see here so ati and then we have ati so it has two states all right so this is um, the first then we have al muthanna the dual what do you remember about the dual um the dual has ani aini aini sound right yeah. ani aini aini right so al muslimani al muslimaini al muslimaini uh, so when we say al muslimani this is marfu by alif right and when we say al muslimaini it is mansub by ya and when we say al muslimaini it is mansub by ya majrur by ya ani aini aini so also uh, this one has two states ani aini aini okay the sound masculine plural jam'ul mudhakkari as-salim also una ina ina do you remember the sounds al muslimuna al muslimina al muslimina una ina ina so this is marfu by waw and it is mansu by ya and it is majrur by ya also it has two states una ina ina so for the dual it is ani aini aini and for the plural it is una ina ina 
Then we talk about the five nouns, al-asma al khamsatu when used in idafa construction, yani when we use them as mudaf, mudaf alayh, then they will be used as, with, when they are marfu, it will be with wow, when it is mansub, it will be with alif, and when it is majroor, it will be with ya, abu, aba, abi. Do you remember the five nouns? Quickly. Abu, aba, abi. Aku, akha, akhi. Hamu, hama, hami. Okay. Fu, fa, fi. And do, da, the, the. Excellent. Excellent. So five of them over there. Uh, but they will be used in this construction when they are used as, as idafa or when they are used as mudaf. If they are not used as mudaf, then we will use the regular form uh, of the noun. All right, so well, now we are discussing about the secondary endings. In secondary endings, we have the uh, sound feminine plural, uh, then we have al mamnu min as sarf, then al muthanna, then sound masculine plural, and then we have the five nouns. So it has basically five uh, forms of the noun uh, which have the secondary endings. As we discussed, that, like only two forms of the noun, they have primary endings, and the rest of the nouns, they have secondary endings. And here it is a summary, as we can see over here. So if you see here, now uh, al ismi, and then al alamatu, al rafu, al nasbu, al jarru. So three by three, what is meant by that? Any mathematician over there? What is meant by three? Yeah? Three, three states, three forms. Of Excellent. Three. three states in three forms. Perfect. What are those? Al Muslimu, Al Muslima, Al Muslimi. Uh, it has Dhamma, Fatha, and Kasra. Perfect. Then Jamu Taksir, the same thing. So that's why both of them are highlighted. Al Kutubu, Al Kutuba, Al Kutubi. Also, this is three by three. Then we have two by three. What is meant by that? By that? Three forms, two states. Two states. Two states. Okay. Two states. Uh, so it is like how many nouns are there? Uh, four of them. Number one. Jam al Muannithi as Salimu, al Muslimatu, al Muslimati, al Muslimati, Atu, Ati, Ati, or Atun, Atin, Atin. So it has two states. Then Mamnu min as Surf, Zainabu, Zainaba, Zainaba, Ibrahimu, Ibrahima, Ibrahima. Again, it has uh, two states. Then we have al Muthanna, al Muslimani, al Muslimaini, Muslimaini, Ani, Aini, Aini. Also, it has two states, as, as we can see here. When we put alif over here, that, that means this is marfu by alif and mansub bilya and majroor bilya. Ani, 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 and the same over here. Jam al madakiri as salimu al muslimuna una ina ina. So una it is marfu by wow, and then ina ina it is mansub and majroor by ya. Okay, so this is also ya over here, ya over here, and ya over here, and ya over here. How would we recognize that it is muthanna, it is dual, or it is plural? Uh, from sound, the sir. Mean and mean aini, aini is Excellent. muthanna. Yes. Muna, is ina, ina is salim. Yes, for the dual, we have aini, aini sound. Aini, aini, aini. And for the uh, plural, we have the una, ina, ina sound. So aini, aini and una ina. So when you are reciting the Quran, you need to be very careful because sometimes we have uh, this, this al muthanna being used over there. But since we are used to the ina sound, uh, that's why we might tend to ignore it and we might recite it as ina instead of aini. So this is where we need to be careful. And then we have al-asma al um, They have three different states, abu, aba, abi. So um, we say that uh, marfu, uh, so this is a summary of the forms of the verb, primary and the secondary. All right. Then we have estimated endings, or we call them latent or the hidden endings. What kind of endings? Hidden or estimated endings. Okay. This is called al erabu al taqdiriyu. Should be the more here. Al erabu al taqdiriyu. What's the meaning of taqdir? Qaddara taqdir. That is to estimate. Yes, written over here. Qaddara yuqaddiru taqdiran. 
and then we have ismul fa'il is muqaddir which is proportional and ismul maf'ul is muqaddarun okay so when it refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, it's used three times in the quran taqdir al aziz al alim three times used in the quran so that means the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when we talk about uh, in every day then we talk we mean to estimate something also at taqdir wa shukr thanks and appreciation the word taqdir is also used for appreciation at taqdir wa shukr thanks and appreciation but in this context it means to estimate or to hide something and when we say it is muqaddar uh, that means it is hidden or it is estimated so that's why we call it al irabu at taqdiriyu that means estimated endings uh, and why do we call them estimated endings we will see now um, there are three types of nouns in which the endings do not appear why do we call them al-irabu uh, taqdiriyu we call them estimated endings why because the endings do not appear and there are only three types of nouns over there whose endings do not appear uh, that's why we say that the ending is muqaddar or muqaddara okay now we see here uh, the first one is called al-ismu al-maqsuru maqsuru wa laysa maksur with not with kaf is with qaf so restricted nouns the nouns that are restricted qasara yaqsuru to restrict something something qasrun you might have heard about that qasrun is also used for the palace uh, which is restricted qasirun ismul fa'il wa maqsurun ismul maf'ul something that is restricted and why it is called restricted now because it has only uh, these nouns end with alif or alif maqsura so basically they end with alif um, according to the grammarians alif or alif maqsura they are the same so that's why we say that the ending is alif or alif maqsura um, and the ending is restricted and the ending is hidden for example fatan is marfu fatan is mansub and fatan is majrur okay so now how would we know that it is uh, marfu mansub or majrur of course according to the usage in the sentence but how will we say that this uh, the ending is marfu or mansub or majrur so that's why we say that this is uh, the ending is muqaddar or the muqaddara the ending is hidden that's why it is called uh, al maqsur or the restricted noun similarly we have asan and asan and asan so a stick again as we can see here um, it has the it is the same in the three forms and when we use al with that it will be the same al fata al fata al fata and al asa al asa al asa and inshallah when we discuss uh, the lesson then we will see the examples as well like how they are used in the sentence so the first one is um, when we talk about the um, estimated endings or al irab taqdiriyu the first one is maqsur guess the second one manqus manqus perfect the defective nouns manqus okay these nouns end with an original ya with kasra before it so these nouns always end with ya and they always have kasra before them that's why we call them manqus in this group arafu and aljaru endings are hidden so this one and this one is hidden however a nasbu ending appears so a nasb is not hidden in the maqsur all the three endings are hidden but here only the rafu and the jaru are uh, these states are hidden whereas the the nasb state appears look over here without al qadin and uh, al raf is qadin and al jar is qadin but al nasb is qadiyan so in the in the nasb the ya has appeared qadin qadiyan qadin and when we have al with that then also the ya comes back al qadi al qadi but when we talk about the mansub you know that the ya accepts fatha the ya will accept fatha but the alif maqsura or the alif will not accept fatha so that's why the fatha comes back over here so qadin basically it is qadiyun you remember that qada yaqdi qadiyun right and then it has been replaced by and uh, the damatain has been replaced by kasratain and we call it al noon at tanwin al ayun that like 
and because like the, the grammarians say that that like the matain uh, they are heavier on the on the ya that's why it has changed into qadin so qadin qadian qadim do you remember the plural of qadin qudatun excellent perfect and also it has two plurals as as i told you number one it is on the uh, pattern of fuatun okay now qudatun and the second one ani Una, una. That ending, like all the nouns, all the derived forms of the noun, they will have the ani, una, una ending. So, qadin, qadiyani, qadiyuna, qadiyuna. Okay. As I said earlier, um, we have also discussed like uh, da'i, and then the plural is du'atun, nahwiyun, and the plural is nuhatun, but we also say nahwiyuna and nahwiyina. So also it can have the ending of una, ina, ina, and it comes on the specific pattern, which is fu'atun, like qudatun. All right. And then uh, the mudaf of the pronoun first person singular, you know that al-ya al-mutakallim, do you remember that? That al-ya al-mutakallim, when it is connected to a noun, uh, then the ending will disappear. For example, we have here kitab plus ya al-mutakallim, kitabi, so in Arafu, it will be Kitabi. Al Nasbu, it will be Kitabi. And Al Jaru, it will be also Kitabi. So, Hada Kitabi, Fi Mahali Rafin. Ishtaraytu Kitabi, Fi Mahali Nasbin. Wa Ma Jetu Bi Kitabi Al Yawma. What will be the translation of this sentence? Ma Jetu Bi Kitabi Al Yawma. I didn't come with my book today. Excellent. I didn't bring my book with me today, or I didn't come with my book today. So here it is, Hada um, Kitabi, it is Marfu. Why it is Marfu? Because Hada is Muqtada and Kitabi is Khabar. Ishtaraytu, I bought Kitabi, my book. So Marful. it is Marful, Marful Bihi. And Ma Jaitu Bi Kitabi, here it is Majru. So we say this is Fi Mahalli Raf'in, Wa Nasbin Wa Jarin. And we have I discussed about this uh, many times in book number two. Uh, then we have uh, the easier part, um, the declinable nouns. Um, it should be non-declinable nouns, right? Al-mabniyu min al-asma'i, the non-declinable nouns, the ones that cannot be. Yeah, non-declinable nouns, so yeah. All right, so all nouns are declinable except for the following types. So all nouns are de declinable except for the following types. And we have discussed these types in book number one, not even in book number two. Abdamairu, all the pronouns, and they are mabniyun. Um, for example, hadi damairu rafi, and these pronouns are in nominative case. For example, huwa, hum. Do you remember uh, the conjugation of huwa? So all of them are marfu, all of them are marfu, excellent. And similarly, past tense verb like the habtu and qalu, they are also marfu, they are in the place of rafu. Then uh, we have hadihi, the mayru, nasbi. When will the pronouns be mansub? Yes, please tell me. It is attached to the verb or? Excellent. Or... Only to the verb. When they are attached yeah. to the verb or when they are ismu inna, right? Inna ka, right? Yeah. When they are ismu yeah. inna or when they are attached to a verb, and then they will be always mansub. Ra'aytu hu, ra'aytu huma, ra'aytu hum, ra'aytu ha, ra'aytu huma, ra'aytu hunna. And then uh, the, you can do the complete conjugation with ra'aytu. Uh, so ra'aytu who I saw him. So here, who is in the place of nasb. So these pronouns are in accusative case. As aluka, again, it is in the place of uh, object, a nasb. And darabani, he hit me, also it is in the place of nasb. Okay, and these pronouns are in the genitive case. Hadi adamayro jarri. Kitabu who, why kitabu who is... Who is Why? It is mudaf Who is mudaf Yes. Mudaf Excellent. So, so when the noun is mudaf ilay, or when it comes after the preposition, it will be majroor. So the noun will be majroor only for two reasons. Either it is mudaf ilay, or it comes after the preposition. So kitabu who, uh, who is majroor, daftaru ha, ha is majroor, 
alayhim, him is majroor and lana is also majroor as well. So at the mayr, then we have the demonstrative pronouns, asma al isharati, um, like hada, hadihi, dalika, ulaika. However, please remember that we have discussed in book number two as well. All asma al isharati are mabriyun except for the dual. So the dual are um, morabun, they are flexible or declinable. So hadani, hadaini, hadaini for the masculine dual and hatani, hataini, hataini for the feminine dual. So when it is marfu, mansub, and majroor, as you can see here, ani, aini, aini. So the ani, aini, aini sound tells us that this is mansub and majroor. Similarly, hatani, hataini, and hataini. Asma'ul ishara, that's number two. Number three, relative pronouns, al asma'ul mausulatu, like alladhi, allati, alladina, and allati. So we have discussed the singular and the plural. And today, inshallah, our chart, like our forms are complete now. So we have completed everything like the verb. We have learned all the forms of the verb, like singular, dual, and plural. Also for the noun, we have learned all the forms of the noun, singular, dual, and plural. And even here for the uh, relative pronouns and also for the demonstrated pronouns, asma uh, ishara we have also today completed our chart. So it is basically hada, hadani, hadaini, haulai. Hadihi, hatani, hataini, haulai. Right? So what is the uh, first form of uh, this masculine, singular masculine? For qareeb, nearby, hada. For the dual, hadani. Hadani, hadaini, hadaini. What is the plural? Similarly, hadihi, hatani, hataini, hataini, and haulai. So the plural is the same for all of them, which is haulai. And then we have the relative pronouns, asma'ul masula, alladhi, allati, alladina, and allati. Four of them we have learned, but we did not learn about the dual. So uh, today you see here over there, alladani, alladaini, alladaini and allatani, allataini, allataini. So we have alladhi, alladhi for the singular masculine, alladani for the dual, and when it is marfu, and when it is mansub, it will be alladaini, and majroor will be alladaini. And similarly, we have, uh, what will be the plural? Plural will be alladina. So alladhi, alladani, alladaini, alladaini, alladina. And then we have allati, and then allati, Allatani, Allataini, Allataini. And what will be the plural? Allai. Allati, Allai. 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 Both of Allai. them. Allai yes, both, of them. The Quran. both of them being used in the Quran. Excellent. And then um, this is um, the end of it. Some interrogative words like man, asma uh, istifham, as we know that they are used to ask questions. Man, aina, ma, mata, and kaifa. Which uh, if we say some, do you remember any ismal istifham which is declinable? Ayyun. Ayyun, 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 excellent. When, and when it is used as mudah, mudah, it will be ayyu, ayya, and ayyi, excellent. Some adverbs like idha, um, haythu, amsi, and al-ana. So some adverbs are also mabniyun. Do you remember any um, adverb or dharf? Uh, which is not mabni? Qablu. Qablu and badu, right. Min qablu wa min badu, but when we have mudafile after that, then it will be min qabli and min badi. Perfect. Then we have the verbs, the verb nouns, asma will fail, like they are nouns, but they do the function of the verb, like amina, and when we start, we say amin, uffin, and ahi. So they are also mabniyun. And then we have compound numbers. Do you remember al adadul murakkabatu? The numbers from 30, 11, uh, from 11 to 19. 99. The numbers from 11 to 19, la? 11 to 19 only. 19, not 99. Okay. La, 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 11 to 19, they are, uh, they are mabniyun. Yeah, Mabani the, the murakkab. Yeah, but after that also it's murakkab only in Ustad, but how it will be the, the state construction? Sorry? Like if you have to say 23, how will we have, that will not be a Murakkab construction. No, 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 that will be a- uh, That will be not there, there, sir. No, it's not there because that, no, is, that will be excluded, sir. 23, 23, Sorry. how do we say that? 23? 
And then you have whatever you have, like So over there we have wow. Wow will be added. Okay. Wow will be added. Okay. So that's why that is called wow al matufa, which is basically used But here no wow is added. That's why we say this is compound numbers and they are mabni al fath. Ahada ashara kaukaban. Do you remember that example? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and similarly, if you have 13, 14, 15 uh, masculine students or feminine students, uh, so we know that uh, that they are these uh, compound the numbers from one. 11 to mm -hmm. 19, um, from 1 to 9 ashara along with their feminine forms. So these are basically for the masculine and for the feminine, they will be opposite in gender. Only the first part of ithna ashara and ithna da ashara is declinable. Do you remember that? Ithna, 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 ithna. So the first part of 11 and 12 is only declinable. Uh, otherwise, from 11 to 19, uh, these numbers are um, uh, these numbers are mabniyun. They are non-declinable. So Even, this uh, is, you said 11 and 12 is declinable. Only 12 is declinable. The first part that? of 11 and 12, as we can see here, only okay. the first part of first part. Yes, only the first part of 11 and 12 is declinable, as we can see here. Ithna ashara and ithnata ashara, ithnay ashara, ithnatay ashara. So that's only the first part is declinable. All right, so um, it's basically a review of everything that we learned in book number one and some of the thing that we, things that we learned in book number two. So inshallah tomorrow we will again like go through all these things in lesson number one, basically, which all of them are in Arabic, inshallah. And then I will send you the file as well. So you can relate to it and inshallah, go through this file. And tomorrow, inshallah, we will start our lesson number one. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika, shahadu wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.